Iron deficiency anemia is one of the most common diagnoses that we will make in the hospital. And there may be one aspect of the treatment and management of this that you may be missing. One of the biggest pimp questions that you may get about iron deficiency anemia is, what are we supposed to do for all patients who have unexplained iron deficiency anemia. And the typical answer for this is a colonoscopy, but what you might not have known is both lower and upper endoscopy are in indicated for the workup of unexplained iron deficiency anemia. I remember this uh, learning pearl from Core IM Podcast, which is one of my favorite podcasts that I, I like listening to, or basically really the only one I do listen to. And I made an Anki card about this, but it says here that men and postmenopausal without any history of overt bleeding should be referred to scope from both upper and lower endoscopy. And I was surprised by this because I think everybody knows, you know, these people have a high risk for colon cancer or something. Maybe they need to get a lower endoscopy, but we didn't know as much about getting the upper endoscopy. But it's not just the upper and lower endoscopy. There's a couple of tests that you need to send as well. So when I saw this patient, I basically was like, oh, you know, I remember this uh, card I made about upper and lower endoscopy. So um, that's definitely something that this patient needs, but I actually wanted to confirm that really quick. So what I did, I just did a quick Google search and you'll find that there's these AGA 2020 guidelines, which recommends that gastroenterologists perform bidirectional endoscopy on asymptomatic men and postmenopausal women with iron deficiency anemia. So that's point number one that you may have been missing in your iron deficiency patients. But the other thing that uh, you may have missed is that all of these patients should undergo H. pylori stool antigen testing as well as celiac disease. And so we ended up sending all of these tests on all of our patients too, in addition to a GI referral for upper and lower endoscopy. Now it's possible you may have known all of this, but I think a lot of times um, us as hospitalists, we don't know that you need an upper and lower endoscopy and H. pylori testing and uh, celiac testing, and you need to refer, refer to GI. So all of those things are things you need to do and think about for these patients, and you need to document it so the PCP can follow up on these. It's really nice when you know you hear a learning point on a podcast or something, and then you actually look it up and you find out way more details than you knew before. And you know this is something that's so important because we find iron deficiency anemia all the time in the hospital. And I bet you so many patients go home without that GI referral without that upper and lower endoscopy and without that H. pylori and celiac testing. And who knew that celiac testing was indicated for all these patients? I, I did not know that before. The other thing that I got to practice this rotation was, um, you know, actually giving iron dextran for the first time. So if you watched my prior video on iron deficiency anemia, which I will link up here, um, I had talked about the different formulations of iron that you can use. And a lot of times in the hospital, we really should be giving these patients IV iron because if we can replace a whole gram based on the firm trial, uh, that'll basically replace their whole stores and they won't need to be discharged on oral iron or ferrous sulfate or ferrous gluconate, which are okay, but they don't have great absorption and they have a ton of GI side effects. So all of these patients, we really should be just giving them IV iron straight up. Now, the problem is iron sucrose has a lower risk for anaphylaxis, but we don't often have five days to give uh, iron sucrose for. Usually we do 200 milligrams times five days. There are some studies where people are doing, you know, 500 times two days and one gram times one day, but generally we do 200 times five. Now with IV iron dextran, you can give the whole dose as one shot. The risk here though, is that you have a higher risk of anaphylaxis with this formulation. And I think the, the risk of it is very, very low. It's probably like 1% chance or something. It's not like the very old iron formulations where they had a really high risk of uh, anaphylaxis. But the benefit is like, you know, if a patient is getting ready for discharge, I wanna just give them a whole gram straight up so that they don't have to discharge on oral iron. So the easy way to do this is what you do is a 25 milligram test dose of IV iron dextran. And if they don't have a reaction to that, then one hour later, you give them 975 milligrams of IV iron dextran. And then that gives you a whole gram to refill or replace their iron stores. Now, this was really great for me to try out for the first time. I really enjoyed, you know, doing this and, you know, putting something that I basically learned all online uh, into practice. And uh, it worked out well. And I feel like I'm probably benefiting the patient by doing this. Again, like I said, think about how many patients are coming in with iron deficiency anemia that may be unexplained and how much benefit you're doing by doing all of these things. GI referral for upper and lower endoscopy, H. pylori stool testing, celiac testing, and replacing a gram of iron. This is something that we as hospitalists can really help out to set these patients up for success when they follow up with their PCPs and make sure things don't get missed. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one and peace.